Hi, I'm John from Offroad CC and I'm sharing this box with Schraub's new range of super casing tyres. Right, so Schwalbe has had a fairly big overhaul of their entire tyre range, whether that's from their downhill tyres all the way to their cross-country racing stuff. And that's been an aid of trying to simplify what sort of casing you need for what sort of job. So before, although some stuff was fairly self pan like downhill, that was downhill casings, then super gravity for you know, enduro, super gravity style riding. When you got to the other end of the spectrum, there are a whole load of different kind of trail and cross country top options. And now they've simplified that into just five things, all of them super. So now you've got super downhill, super gravity, that's like your enduro hard riding, super trail, so that's kind of our all mountain type stuff, super ground, which is kind of hard cross country, dare I, dare I say it, down country style riding, and then super race, which is the lightest and fastest casings that they've got. So each of those casings has something different, and I think we'll start off with the super downhill. Super downhill gets a six layer carcass, so the actual the material of the casing, this sort of bit, goes over the top six times, but then in addition to that, it's actually got dual apex sidewall protection. So just on the sidewall here, there's another insert that helps toughen up that. And then it also has a snakeskin sidewall protection, which goes up to around here. And then it has a bead chafer, which sits there and that's to kind of help it seal tubelessly and also to give it some pinch protection. When you absolutely bottom it out, there's just like a little bit more material there to help cushion your rim. Now, moving on to super gravity, of which uh, these are they. Um, this has a four layer carcass. So instead of going over six times, it now goes over four times. But the big difference here is that it's snakeskin layer. It doesn't just go up the sidewall. It goes all the way over. So snakeskin is sort of like a cut resistant kind of polymer layer that's stuck in there. So this has that all the way over there. It too has uh, apex sidewall protection, but there's only one layer of apex sidewall protection, and it also has the chafing bit there, the chafer. Next, I'll move on to Super Trail. Now, Super Trail isn't actually that different from the Super Gravity tire. It's got three instead of four layers of carcass, uh, but in terms of the other protection, it's all the same. So that's a full layer of snakeskin protection, uh, an apex in the sidewall there, and then also the bead chafer. Uh, that means it kind of splits the difference between the two, which so I think if you're maybe a good mixture of them is that if you put a super gravity on the rear, then a super trail on the front, that should give you like a good level of protection while minimizing your weight. Of course, then uh, we move into the super ground tires. I don't actually have any there here, but uh, they're basically the same as these, except you don't get that apex sidewall protection in there, which again, loses a little bit of weight, uh, but also loses a little bit of pinch puncture protection. And of course the absolute fastest ones going are these, the Super Race. Uh, as you can see, these come in a nice clear tan wall. Um, so these have the same three layer sidewall, but it's only a two layer at the top. So it's basically wrapped kind of once there, over there, up there, you get the drift. Um, they do have um, something called race guard protection, which is a, just a strip that goes over there. Uh, and that's another polymer layer, and that's to obviously protect against like thorns, punctures, that sort of thing. And uh, as before, um, you get a chafe thing, but there's, uh, it's much, much lighter weight than on the other tyres. So the aim of all this is to just make it a little bit easier when you're picking your tyres to know which casing you should go for. If you're you know, riding an e-bike really hard or a downhill racer, then like Super DH is the way to go. Um, if you're a really hard enduro rider, maybe put Super DH on the back. Um, maybe a super gravity on the front. Um, all round enduro riding, big mountain stuff, maybe super gravity all over. That's actually what I've been uh, running on my bike since these tires turned up with uh, a new Big Betty and a Magic Mary on the front. It's been really good, casing feels really good. There's oodles of grip. Uh, we'll get into which compounds later. Uh, yeah, and then if you want to kind of lighten things, then you can go further down. Obviously you can mix and match. Obviously not all tires or not all tread patterns available in all casing. So like there's no point having this racing ray in like the super gravity casing or the super DH casing. No one's ever going to use that. But it generally follows that the tires that are suitable for the correct use are available in a tire sidewall and tire compound. 
that will suit that use. So for example, Magic Mary is available in all the sort of harder hitting stuff, but not in the lighter casings. Nobby Nicks, uh, they mostly sit in like the middle range, so like super trail, super ground, that sort of thing. So yeah, it, it's rationalised their range a lot and should make things much easier. I got out all the measuring tools earlier. Um, so this is a durometer meter. So it basically tells you how hard tyre rubber is, which gives you a good idea of how grippy that rubber will be. And obviously it's very hard to measure and that's not the only way that grip is affected on a tyre because obviously it's the rebound of the rubber and this just measures pretty much the surface layer of the rubber, how hard that is. And obviously you've got a lot to do with the construction and casing underneath that rubber uh, or the outer layer of rubber, which will have a big impact on grip. But it gives you like a good rough idea. So anyway, uh, these super gravity tyres I've got here, they came up at about a 50A durometer. Um, the super trail tyres, they came up around 50A and these came up, or the super race, or super race, they came up as about 60A all over. So that kind of tracks all through. It's a similar story with sidewall thickness. So I've tried to measure them all. Actually, it's very hard to, with this tool to measure the top of the casing, so I can't get it over there without cutting the tires up, and I don't want to do that just yet. I need to ride them first. Um, but I've been measuring the sidewall here and getting this little thing on it. And you can just put that in and start measuring there. So I've been trying to get it above that um, chafer layer there. That gives you a good idea of roughly how thick the sidewall is. And again, these are very vague measurements and making tires is not a precise art. So the measurements actually, depending on which point you take them around the tire, they do actually vary quite a bit because you a rough idea of like basically how burly the sidewall is. So on these, um, these super gravity tires, uh, it's roughly coming up as around 1.7 mil thick just on this, on this bit of the sidewall here. Um, on these ones, um, it's a little bit thinner, um, which is around like 1.1. Again, it's, it's hard to know. And then as you'd expect, these puppies are the thinnest uh, coming up around like one mil or so. Um, it's really interesting to note, um, you, can, you can feel the different protections they've got in here. So for example, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but you can see that there, that little bead there. I'm pretty sure this here is the chafer. And then on that, you've got the apex protection just up here. And then on the top, you can feel there's different layers there. So it's all very interesting. Um, you'll also be pleased to learn that the tires now measure up exactly as they should do. So um, this is a knobby nick or a new knobby nick in a 2.6. See how much it measures across the knobs, and lo and behold, it's about 2.6. That's on a 30 mil rim. And if I go to this, which is a 2.4 Big Betty, the other new tire in the range, uh, lo and behold, it too is about a 2.4. Magic, who'd have thunk? So there have also been some changes and updates to tires, namely the Big Betty, which is a big gravity tire, and the Knobby Nick, which most trail riders would be familiar with. Uh, the Nobby Nick has got a bit more aggressive. Schwab say that there is there's better clearing in the mud. Uh, it's apparently it's got more stability. And I don't actually have a Nobby Nick here to compare, or an old Nobby Nick to compare it to, but it's looking really good. Like nice, evenly spaced shoulders, like with a good bit of strength in them. Uh, same with the top. And it will now come in the super ground and super trail casings. Um, and you can get it in Addict Soft, which is a bit softer, or like this one. Um, which is Addict Speed Grip. So again, pick your casing, pick your compound, you should get a good front or rear tire out of a knobby nick. Uh, I've not spent any time on this yet because I've been busy riding these, I was gonna say big boys, but they're not, they're big girls, they're big Bettys. Uh, and this is really nice and chunky. It's ideally paired with a Magic Mary on the front, which is how I've been running it. And it's got like really nice strong and supportive edge grip and then uh, does that tread pattern remind you of anything probably does but yeah it's one that works and this is said to have improved braking stability i will say this is in the uh, relatively soft addict soft compound as well as being in the uh, super gravity casing and it's put up really well it's been really dry here been riding it quite hard obviously lots of braking going on and the tire edges are still in very good shape and I would say loads of nice damping in the carcass, 
uh, paired with the Magic Mary, it is a really good setup. Obviously, there's a little bit of weight. Uh, this comes in at in a 2.4 and 650B. This comes in at 1,200 grams, um, whereas the Nobby Nick in a Super Trail, uh, but 2.6, uh, that comes in at 1,070 grams. So I'd say that makes a really good rear tire, but it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up. Um, while I'm on that, um, this racing ray I have here in 29 by 2.35, that is uh, 740 grams, so really quite impressively light. Anyway, I'll be putting some more time into all of these tires and we'll come back to these proper reviews on the website soon. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this overview. Uh, if you have, please give us a like. And for more of this sort of thing, for more of this sort of thing, consider subscribing to our channel. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Goodbye.